Hey, what's up, guys? It is Monday, January 31st. Coming at you to talk about some magic. I figured today we'll go over some of what I think are the good cards coming out of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Um, it's coming out pretty quick here. I think we have a pre-release weekend coming up. It's either this weekend or the next. Um, I'm not big into pre-releases. I'll do some stuff on Arena. I'll do some pre-release. Well, not pre-release, but draft type stuff. Um, but, yeah. Just here we go over a few of the cards. I think there's some exciting ones for different formats and whatnot. So let's get right into it. Hope you guys are having a great day and hope you have fun watching this. Uh, the card that I've seen that I'm most excited about is Lion Sash. Uh, it is one and a white for an equipment cat. It's an artifact creature. Uh, and you can pay one white mana to exile tar card from a graveyard. If it was a permanent card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Lion Sash. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each plus one counter on Lion Sash. And it's got reconfigure too, which is like a equip cost. Um, this card looks pretty bonkers. And you got like scavenging news to compare it to. But, I mean, this could go into stuff with Luris and Modern and in Pioneer. Uh, it fits into most of the equipment decks in Commander, I would say, that are running white. Um, it just seems like an all-star, all-star card. So good, you know, uh, being able to, and the fact that it hits permanent cards and puts the counters on, um, the takeaway is that you don't get life gain like you would from Scavenging Ooze, but being mono white, it fits into a lot of decks better than, you know, adding a secondary color. Like in Modern for Death and Taxes, there is a green-white version, but it's not very good. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, and I did see just a D and T list that I think it might have won like a, one of the Horoya tournaments for Modern. Um, this seems like it could be in the sideboard or even maybe main decking. You know, hitting even just lands and making your stuff bigger, being able to vial it in and then equip on your turn, or you just get a 1-1 one, one that you can start activating. Both of those seem like really strong. I think that's probably like one of the number one cards I've seen for modern so far in the spoilers. Um, if you guys disagree or agree, let me know down in the comments below. Um, let's see, then there's Invoke Calamity. Uh, red is my favorite color in Magic. And this card looks sweet. It's almost like a collected company for spells. Um, Invoke Calamity is one and four red for an instant. You may cast up to two instant and or sorcery spells with total converted mana cost, I'm sorry, total mana value six or less from your graveyard and or hand without paying their mana cost. If those spells will be put in your graveyard, exile them instead. Exile Invoke Calamity. I'm thinking of this in like maybe something that's red blue or something where you can be able to exile fabricate because it doesn't say that it has to be red spells. It could be any color spells as long as the two of them equal up to six mana or less. So fabricate plus, I don't know, lighting bolt. You know, the fact that you're getting to recast these for a free cost is pretty amazing. Um, some of these equipment artifact creatures things are cool, but like lizard blades, it does look cool. You got a double striker. It's one and one red. For a uh, double strike equipment lizard, equipment creature has double strike and reconfigure too, but it's a 1-1. One, one. I think on some of these cards, they're almost a liability. You know, you go to attach for the two mana and it's probably going to die. That being said, it might be pretty good because it's a double strike for two mana, which we've seen cards like that in the past, usually in white. Um, it's interesting. Runaway Trash Bot. I don't think this card's very good, but it is really cool looking. You got, uh, it's three mana, any color, for an artifact, creature, construct, trample, runaway trash bot, gets plus one, plus oh for each artifact and enchantment card in your graveyard. I don't know if that's going to be any good, but I really like, so once in a while, you see, like, weird cards that you just like, like Hot Soup, back from one of the M sets. Like, anytime I see that, it cracks me up. That, that card's pretty cool. Runaway Trash Bot. Uh, let's see. The art for some of these cards, like Lion Sash, Invoke Calamity, um, they have like the very anime, it almost looks like, especially an Invoke Calamity, it almost looks like an attack from like Inuyasha or something like that as they're announcing their sweet anime <laughs> blades coming through. 
See if I can find Tezzeret. Give me just a second here. I had this all up beforehand, but it somehow took me out of it. So, see if we can find where we are at. Um, what cards are you guys most excited about coming out? All right, Tezzeret, Betrayer of Flesh. You got two and two blue. This is a legendary planeswalker. Uh, the first activated ability of an artifact you activate each turn costs two less to activate. It just as a static ability, that's really good. Draw two cards, then discard two cards unless you discard an artifact card. The looting seems pretty strong for this one. Uh, and the fact that you can get an upside with discarding an artifact, which you're running in a, probably in an artifact-based EDH deck, seems good. I do see this mostly in EDH, although it could probably see some Pioneer play or and or Standard play. I don't think... Maybe after the set with so many artifacts, Standard might have more going on for that. And then its emblem is... Oh no, there's a minus two. Target artifact becomes an artifact creature. If it isn't a vehicle, it has base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. And you get negative six. You get an emblem whenever an artifact you control becomes tapped to draw a card. Um, I'm working on an Urza deck. If I get that, it's definitely going to go in there. Because getting to six with a starting loyalty of four is not hard at all. All right, here we go. Got that... See what other notes I have down. Oh yes, the Wanderer. Wanted to talk about that one. The Wandering Emperor. We finally got an answer to who the Wanderer was in War of the Spark. I know it was like kind of a big thing. Like I saw some cool stuff about it maybe being Emrakul. Turns out it is not. It is uh, two and two white for a legendary planeswalker with flash. As long as the Wandering Emperor entered the battlefield this turn, you may activate her loyalty abilities anytime you can cast an instant. You can put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature. It gains first strike until end of turn. Negative one, create a 2-2 two -two white samurai creature token with vigil vigilance. Negative two, exile target tapped creature. You gain two life. And it starts with three loyalty. I think in standard and pioneer, this card's going to be really cool. Um, an instant planeswalker effect and you get to choose between three things so it's almost like you're playing a command in those formats i think it'll be really good and definitely in limited that'll be really good as well um outside of that i don't see it saying too much it's not good enough for modern and edh i think there's probably better stuff you could be playing unless you're maybe playing mono white mono white is getting quite a few good cards from this new set march of the otherworldly light it's x and white as an additional cost to cast the spell, you may exile any number of white cards from your hand. The spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way. Exile target artifact, creature, or enchantment with mana value X or less. So I don't think this is going to take out uh, Prismatic Ending in Modern or Path to Exile. Um, it does hit a few other types other than just creature. Uh, prismatic Ending can hit anything if you have enough different colors. Um... But the fact that it's instant speed is good. I think this could be like the pioneer path to exile type effect. Um, and they don't get a land out of it as well. And you don't have to exile the white cards unless it's something that's a high mana value that you can't quite get to that needs to be gone immediately. So I think this card actually has a lot of potential, especially in pioneer. Um, yeah, anything that's running white that needs removal, this hits so many different things and it exiles it for good. I think it has a lot of potential there. All right, what else do we have? Oh, I'm gonna go over to some of the cards I'm excited for, more stuff that's artifact orientated. Um, Jinja Taxis, Progress Tyrant, five and two blue, legendary creature, Phyrexian Praetor. Whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability only triggers once each turn. 
And then whenever an opponent casts an artifact and start a sorcery spell, counter that spell, this ability triggers only once each turn. So kind of an interesting effect. Um, there's a couple other cards that kind of do this, maybe only one that comes to mind, but it only does it for like things that target your stuff. Um, this card is pretty cool. I definitely see it as an EDH thing. Um, I'll definitely be wanting to pick up a copy of it. It looks nice. I think it's a good card. Uh, probably going to go in the Urza deck as well when I'm building um, for EDH, but I don't see it much outside of that. Reality Chip. It's one and one blue. Legendary Artifact Creature Equipment Jellyfish. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. As long as Reality Chip is attached to a creature, you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Reconfigure is two and a blue. This card seems really cool. Uh, you could run it as a commander, which would be interesting. Um, and the ability to put it on stuff and then get value out of the top of your deck. Definitely interested in that. I definitely want one of these. A lot of cyberpunk-esque feels for this set, which is really, really cool. Uh, let's see. Tameshi, the Reality Architect. Two and a blue. Whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. X and white, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Return to our artifact or enchantment card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. O activate only as a sorcery. That card seems really cool. It seems like a very high power ceiling on it for commander and stuff. Um, being able to bounce things back and forth and get stuff returned from your graveyard is always good. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to really put that in. Definitely an EDH card for sure, but it could have some other interesting abilities. Show up in other formats. Uh, what else do we have that we wanted to look at? Oh, we're going to move over to red. In red, stuff that I thought was very cool. I already went over Invoke Calamity, but Goro Goro, the Disciple of Ryuse. Uh, it is one and a red. Pay a red. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. Pay five. Create a 5-5 five, five Dragon Spirit creature token with flying. Activate only if you control an attacking modified creature. He's also a legendary creature, Goblin Samurai. The art form is really cool, and the special art form is a particularly very nice looking um, he's like surrounded by a dragon i think the, you'll see him in probably cranko type builds i could see him showing up in that um alternatively you could build a commander around him but i think he's better as part of the 99 not as the commander himself but he is really neat i can understand wanting to build around him scrap welder uh two and a red you can tap it, sacrifice an artifact with mana value X. Return target artifact card with mana value less than X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste on the turn. This is a fine card. It'll probably show up in EDH. We have better cards in almost every format other than Pioneer and Standard for that type of effect. Um, but you could certainly throw it in EDH and run it alongside like uh, Goblin Welder um, and whatever the other one's name is. It's, eluding me at the moment um the art style in this is so cool with all the different uh anime type stuff let's see if i can butcher the name on this one hide jutsu hide jutsu consumes all one black and red for an enchantment saga this is a mythic uh it's first saga Loyalty ability is destroy each non-land permanent with mana value one or less. Two is exile all graveyards. Three is exile the saga, then return to the battlefield transformed underneath your owner's control. That card seems really cool. I can see this in sideboards for sure for red black decks in Pioneer and Modern. Uh, not so much probably in Commander, but it's possible you could have that type of effect if you have a red black deck. It flips into Vessel of the All-Consuming, an enchantment creature over Shaman. Trample, whenever Vessel of the All-Consuming deals damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Whenever Vessel of the All-Consuming deals damage to a player, if it has dealt ten or more damage, that player 
to that player this turn, they lose the game. These effects are always pretty... Some people like them, some people hate them. They usually leave people upset if they lose to a type of thing. Like, oh, well, you're dead, sorry. <laughs> Does not make people happy. And I think the only other card that I thought was interesting was in Devoke invoke despair and i just wanted to kind of rant about it a little bit where is it and evoke despair i thought was pretty cool but and it probably will be all right in standard i don't see again much play outside of that um all right it is one black black Black, black. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life, and you draw a card. Then repeat repeat this process for an enchantment and a planeswalker. Um, it's a sorcery speed ability. This card would be really cool if it just said each opponent instead of target opponent. I think for commander, this would be a really awesome card if it did it for each, maybe once to everybody, but also maybe even to yourself in a way. That way it was hitting everybody at the table, because those type of effects, I think, are way cooler when they hit everybody. But it'll definitely see some standard stuff. I just think they kind of missed out a little bit on this card. It feels like kind of underwhelming due to it being five mana and hitting one player. But I guess in standard or something, it's really good. All the dragons look really cool for Commander. And maybe, like, the red one looks like it could be good in Pioneer, maybe. Um... Oh, I'd forgotten about this one for Commander. I bet you some people are excited for this. It is uh, Tatsunari the Toad Rider. Two and a black for a legendary creature, Human Ninja. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, if you don't control a creature named Kaimi, create Kaimi, a legendary 3-3 black and green frog creature token. With Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Then you can play pay one and a hybrid, either a green or a blue. Tatsunari Toad Rider and target frog you control can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with flying and or reach. I wish the like the the token that you create could somehow assist you in commander damage because I think this card would be a lot better if it had that type of ability. But I mean it's pretty cool. You get a guy riding a toad, a battle armored toad at that, and they're unblockable together. That's all I've seen so far. I mean there's a couple other spoilers that haven't officially come out that I've seen that look pretty neat. Um, but nothing too wild. I don't know what you guys are thinking out there. I mainly play for modern. I've got uh, Golgari Infect. And I've also, I'm working on both a, I guess a hollow one, green red with Vengevine type effects. And also a red white Blood Moon Odds Obosh type deck for modern. And so far, I'm not seeing too many cards that are too exciting for those in particular. Um, for Pioneer, I haven't really been... There's no real place to play Pioneer lately around here. Um, I do have a red-green Bards class type deck um, that I need a couple more cards to finish. That would be really nice to see some stuff for. I haven't seen too much that looks exciting for that either. Uh, but I am building an evil Urza EDH deck. So, and that's mainly just for when I play with people that are playing with their high power decks to take that out and see if we can do a, a quick kind of crazy game. Um, but I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. I need to get stuff like Winter Orb and Howling Mine. Um, that deck's supposed to be just very rude and disgusting. So there's a ton of cards in this set for that. I mean, seen so many artifact type stuff that looks like, oh yeah, I want to put that in there. I'm going to have a hard time limiting it to 99 rather than the other way around. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for tonight. Um, next week, maybe we can talk about some different modern decks, see where the meta is. I was kind of thinking about doing that this week, but I'm not sure if anything's really changed. It kind of looked like the meta was very similar when I looked at it online. Um, Death Shadow's pretty high up on the list. We'll see if it's still there the next coming week. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, like, comment down below, um, subscribe. Anything you do there is appreciated. Just watching the video is appreciated. Hope you guys have a great day. Hope you're staying safe and I'll talk to you later.